So today I wanted to revisit a series I did a little while ago. There's only a couple videos for it, but I think it's very good educationally. And it's one of the things that challenges me as a creative to look into the past and to the top photographers, impact photographers of their times. And who I want to do today, once again, I'm very into street photography, candid photography, um, you know, getting what you want through inspiration. And I want to look at Fan Ho, or Ho Fan, all depending on where you're from. But Fan Ho was one of the most proclaimed street photographers, especially during the 50s and 60s, because he is one of the guys who documented the growth, essentially, right at the start of Hong Kong and how that started to thrive, you know, before, before it blew up to what it is. And he basically was a, you know, a photographer. He became a film director and he was an actor obviously most known for uh, photography and getting into film direction. Um, he was very cinematic with the way he, you know, framed and captured what he did. And he was really kind of a master of natural light and shadows and did a lot of work in black and white, of course. But let's talk a little bit about Fan Ho and uh, let's uh, see what he's got going on. So at an early age, he was gifted a uh, roll of flex and that's basically what he used kind of throughout his career for the most part. And in doing so, one of the things that he was a part of was prioritizing candid photography, but he didn't mind staging something natural. Meaning, if he had an idea, he wanted to get it done, but he didn't mind, you know, once again, candid photography, taking things as they are, not interacting, um, you know, waiting on it, etc. But staging something can have a bad negative tone, especially in street photography, where you're setting up a shot and it's too fake, etc. But one thing he did is he would find an environment, and I talk about this a little more in a couple other points, he would find an environment, sit there, wait for something, and sometimes in the middle of nowhere and hope that something uh, happens or appears, but he wouldn't mind asking strangers, people he didn't know from the streets, to fill in this scene. So in a way, it's still a candid. He's still talking with a stranger. He's just getting the shot that he wants. Now, he did mainly candid stuff, but I respect that it wasn't, you know, he was able to still capture his vision in an authentic way, even though he kind of didn't care about being authentic. But he was candid. He didn't mind staging a few things. He didn't mind staging. He didn't take it as a negative connotation as it is today and was able to get his historic shots to document the times um, as he did. And through a lot of his work, you notice he's got a rhythm to things. Shies, his shape, the negative space, uh, his immense use of natural light, this fog and smoke really create this atmosphere where you know he'll get the sunlight shining through it, big use of silhouettes, natural framing, <sighs> lines, repetitive stuff, etc. Uh, there was just a way he was able to frame and make something and make it look cinematic. It looks like this stuff is from the movies, but that's one of the, th the th key things you'll notate. And to me, the smoke, fog, etc., smog came out um, and how he would shoot through it, get this, the, the God rays of the, of the sun coming over and to be able to, uh, to not be afraid to shooting uh, into light like that too. So there is a rhythm to his work basically every single shot. So it's just good to know you don't have, you're not stuck to just one thing, but the rhythm is a key, key thing. Another thing I respect of Fan was that he wasn't just one type of photography. He didn't niche himself in the one little thing uh, where it was, he was by that. I mean like just being an abstract or minimalistic photographer. He didn't mind being minimalistic having a lot of negative space, but he also didn't mind something more chaotic. Once again, he was documenting the times in the fifties and sixties as Hong Kong started to grow and prosper at the, at the start of it after they got control and they, and he was able to show that minimalistic stuff before the growth. And then as it was growing, added it in to really tie both ends to show the start of something big. It just goes back to show his immense thing on patience, phot phot photography, patience, being able to go to a scene, wait for it. Even if there's nothing there, there's a picture of um, him basically in kind of this like this body of water and like this thing. And he's been waiting there for weeks and has scattered it out. 
And you don't know if it's staged or not. You don't know if he asked someone to go by, but he captured this beautiful thing with this boat filling the frame exactly where he wanted, uh, etc. You know, and there was a little bit more chaos in that one, but he didn't mind going in between different types of things to accomplish that. Minimalism, simplistic, and then chaos fill the frame with a lot of people. So really cool just to know hey, the masters of the time aren't just stuck in one niche. And I touched upon this point before as well, and I just think it's it's good to reiterate, and it is don't be afraid to shoot into the light. Shoot into the sun. Get the silhouettes. Get the god rays. Once again, they did that a lot with the fog and stuff like that, and pictures you've probably seen or are seeing, and uh, yeah, no, don't be afraid of the light. Natural light. And another point that may shock you is he was not afraid of slight manipulation of his photos. And he would do a lot of that in the dark room and really add shadows, darken shadows, etc. But even during his later life, you know, as Digital Age came on with Adobe Photoshop, he wouldn't mind taking old stills, old frames that he had and manipulate them together uh, within newer work or or older work to, to create something new, to create something fresh. So he wasn't afraid of manipulating or photoshopping, dodging and burning, all that kind of stuff. Um, he encouraged it and just thought it was part of more being creative to try refresh look on something old into something new. You have to respect that because the people that are just like, oh, you can only do things a certain way, blah, 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 are boring. Last but not least, I think the last point, and I just want it to be clear, and I think, once again, it's one of the most attractive things, and I just alluded to with the following point, is he didn't care about pure photography. He didn't care about adding a little bit more in the darkroom. He didn't care about conforming to norms of how you should shoot things, etc. Van Ho was a pioneer and above a lot of the people, uh, a fellow photographers of his time, and I think it clearly th shows through his work with the emotions and, and how he was able to document and and frame the times of where he was. So, <sighs> pure photography, who cares? So once again, that really kind of, and, and there's a lot more. I'm just making a simplistic kind of list when it comes to it. But that's kind of fan ho to me and some things that I learned or what he taught me. But I just wanted to, so unfortunately he did pass away in uh, 2016. There's two quotes that I wanna share that I think can really kind of encompass what he what he shared with us and, and, and who he was. And uh, one of the things is, work should stem from, stem from genuine feelings and understandings. Obviously a bit more basic, but it's just, it's gotta come from within. He, he was a lot about inspiration and, and sharing and, and even teaching to an extent too, because he, he also taught a lot, especially when it came to um, his film work and, and stuff like that. But that also being said, he was asked, what is the secret to the art of photography? Shout out to Forbes. And his answer was, it's experimenting, experimenting, and endless experimenting. That sticks out to me. Hopefully that sticks out to you. But uh, let me know down in the comments below. Did you know a lot about Fan Ho or Ho Fan? Have you heard about his work before? His name come up? And uh, if so, without the list that I mentioned, or you can, what are some things that you gather from his work that is impactful still to this day in 2021. Van Ho, unfortunately you're not around, but thanks for teaching a lot of us uh, what's going on. He's got a lot of books and you know, with any of the photos that I shared, the credit will be down in the description below, the estate of his um, link down below, and you could donate and do some stuff as well to you know, appreciate the times and everything like that. But that's a little bit about Van Ho and what he taught me about photography.